a good day, a good morning, good afternoon, wherever each person may be joining from. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, uh, Chikemba is my name. I'm the team leader of Seeds and Plant Genetic Resources in Fowl's Plant Production and Protection Division. If you don't mind our acronym, we refer to ourselves as NSP. Uh, we are thankful to the leadership of NSP, and I see Director Shea here and Deputy Director Remy, uh, for the opportunity to use the platform of the FAO Technical Network on Sustainable Crop Production and, uh, and Agroecology for today's seminar. So we refer to this uh, uh, technical network as uh, FTN. Uh, today's set, uh, webinar is uh, titled uh, Seed Applied Technologies, a Contribution to Sustainable Agriculture. We are also immensely thankful to our friends and colleagues from the International Seed Federation, ISF, uh, for the opportunity to co-organize this event. Uh, the leadership of both FAO and ISF will provide opening remarks in a moment. Uh, however, before they do, there are a few housekeeping issues to which I want to call your attention. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. The recording link will be communicated through the FTN email distribution list. Uh, this way, those who couldn't attend, who couldn't participate in the webinar live, may watch it later. Um, please use the uh, Q and A box to provide your questions and comments, and we invite you uh, to provide these questions and comments, uh, because that is the only way that we can have a robust conversation um, as part of this event. We will make every effort to address your comments and questions during the discussion segment of today's event. Uh, those that cannot be adequately addressed uh, could become the subject of subsequent interactions via email or could even become discussion topics on this, our technical network. Uh, for the more general comments, please, uh, use the chat box. Um, then uh, let me also um, advise that in the interest of time, let me call your attention to the fact that all our interlocutors today are eminently qualified individuals uh, whose repertoire of expertise are as extensive as their accomplishments and their experience. Uh, we have their individual bios, in the third and fourth pages of the agenda. Um, in the interest of time, therefore, um, we shall not be going into elaborate introductions so we can listen to them and get to ask them uh, questions. Uh, for those uh, who do not have uh, uh, copies of the agenda uh, with them, I request Marisol or uh, uh, Manu, to please upload uh, a copy of the agenda to the chat box so uh, participants can uh, uh, download them and refer to the bios of our speakers today. And, and um, to get the proceedings underway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues, I invite uh, Mr. Ying Wan Shea, the director of the Plant Production and Protection Division. Uh, to provide his opening remarks on behalf of uh, FAO. Uh, Director Shia, please. Do you hear me? Yes, we okay. hear you loud and clear, Shia. Very good. Thank you very much, Chiki, and as the moderator for today, and the Honorable Mr. Donald Cole, the President of International Seed Federation, Honorable Mr. Michelle Keeler, Secretary General of International Seed Federation, and the distinguished participants and the panelists, dear colleague. It is my great pleasure to make some opening remark as the first 
if you I, I, I save webinar and see it apply I see it apply technology. I'm sure everybody experts here know how important of a seed it is. We cannot have a good crop without good seed. Here, I just give you example, some example, how important for the seed. And this, I give you this data since the last 1960s until now so far, about 50 years or 60 years, I can say. In the global, globally, maize production increased by four times. However, the acreage or area only increased by 87%, is number one, for corn. And the second example, wheat production increased by 12.4 times. However, the area only increased by 6%. The third example, the rice production increased by 12.5% time. The acreage increased only 40%. Through this three important figure, we can figure out how important a good seed for the production. So this is also true today ever, especially given the many challenges we are facing in agriculture production. And everybody knows that. The global population has more than doubled even in the last 50 years, from 3.2 billion to 7.8 billion. And it is, and then to predict it will be 9.7 billion in the 20, 20, in 2050. So you can see how to match into, you know, to feed so big a population, yeah, about 10 billion. It's a very big population. This is not only for population increase. However, we have a larger challenge. Everybody know that very limited resource. This means limited land, limited water particularly. At the same time, this challenge will be complicated by climate change, makes things worse. So in this big three change I can see, and now we, what is the solution? I think the best efficient solution, we need very good seed. Number one, I can see, yeah. Through this very good seed, we can increase the yield, number one. Also, we should increase healthy diet. Now we need healthy diet. And then now this, this means nutrition. And also need very good seed can mitigate or reduce carbon dioxide. So this means in the future, seed, will play good seed, will play irreplaceable role in sustainable for sustainable, many for sustainable goal. So in this context, the chain of full seed production, quality control, distribution, whether regional, national, and globally, in the future will be very, nowadays also is complicated or dangerous being disrupted by COVID-19 pandemic. So this means a lot of challenge. So this means a lot of challenge now for our food security. Of course, we need food security. We need state security first. So this may be today, everybody should be concerned. So this means in response to all this challenge, we need come our science and the technology. This will be solution. Here at FEO, we are committed to using evidence-based scientific approach, developing tool that will enable member countries for better strategic direction 
and the decision. One of the most important approach, I'm very glad to make an announcement that FAO is going to organize the global conference on seed green development of the seed industry. Maybe this is as the big events in our seed sector, seed community, whenever. You know that the last meeting is 12 years ago. Now we are now, this means I remember it's 2000, or the, uh, I, I, anyway, I, I think it's about 2008. Now this means uh, eight or nine. This means 12 years later, we do it again from the seed. You can see how important for this seed. Remember this conference have three keywords, global conference, global activity. Second keywords is green development, yeah, to support sustainable development. And the third word is the seed industry. This means about research, production, and the marketing. Everybody will be together to discuss what's the future of the seed. So that's why I think now today's meeting is very important. I make this announcement. And now this meeting will take place, I think, 4 to 5 November. I'm sure this time maybe a combination of online meeting and offline meeting. I hope everybody to be get very excited and at the same time be prepared. So take this opportunity, I want to emphasize something. Five area, what I'm going to say, five green area for seed applied technology for your consideration today. Today we emphasize about the seed technology and also applied technology, right? So please consider the five green area. First one, about the green production system. Now we are support sustainable development for all the FEO for NSP is a transition for green innovation to support better production. So in this case, I hope everybody should think over how can we support production, green innovation to support better crop production. That's number one. Second one about green seed system. This means we should now establish a very good system and the seed, green seed system, including should be very inclusive, very efficient, innovative, resilient system and, and national level, regional level, and also global level to make sure to support the use quality seed and the planting material. And so this is very important for people think about the green seed system. The third green, green variety. Nowadays we really need green variety. This means it's very high productivity, although also high resilience, high diversity, and also high resistance to bio factor like temperature tolerance high temperature tolerance or cold temperature tolerance. And also with resistance to pests and the disease, we need this kind of seed. Number four is green technology for seed treatment. There is a lot of seed technology I want to emphasize about seed treatment because not only depends on Variety breeding, we cannot make everything perfect. However, externally, if we, we make a very good treatment, we'll be okay. I can say seed with treatment will be very important in the middle to integrate all a lot all a lot all the technology. This technology about like it's not a seed treatment, and then for pesticide control for dry land agriculture, yeah? And anyway, we can use the seed and then also for better fertilization. So use the seed dress is possible and also for procession seedling. So this means please emphasize more about the green technology, particularly for seed treatment. 
And the last one I want to mention about green enabler for seed technology. This including policy, regulation, and the standard to make green development of a seed industry. So this is the whole idea and for your consideration. And in this regards, I'm looking for word to learn more from you all today about what you're concerned about in the seed applied technology and also about regulatory stage for science and to project to developing for green seed industry. Now I would like to give the floor to the Secretary General of International Seed Federation. The floor is yours and Michelle. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Xira, and thank you so much, colleagues from the uh, Director of Plant Production and Production Division. First of all, um, Director Xira, we are very welcome your announcement of the organization later this year um, on this so important debate on seed. And I will make it short because you mentioned a lot of points. We would like just to emphasize by starting the today's discussion about sustainable agriculture, also to remind all of us, what you had mentioned, seed is important. And we are saying seed is the starting point of agricultural production and food production. And I think in a year like this year, where we have the UN Food Systems Summit, in a year like this year, where we have still the International Year of Plant Health, in a year like this year, where we have the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables, it is nothing more important that we have an open dialogue on the role of seed, but also, and I would like to emphasize it also, on the role on what the private sector can contribute in the whole chain of food production. Yes, we know we need to review food systems. Yes, we know we need to engage in sustainable agriculture, but what I would like to emphasize here, the seed sector and the International Seed Federations, since many, many years, ISF since 100 years, we are engaged in one thing. And this we're always saying, we are contributing in our relationship day by day with the farmers on the ground to make improved varieties accessible to the farmers around the world to do what? For sustainable agriculture and food production. And when we are saying improved varieties, it is clear, and Director Xia, I, I know you well your involvement also in the National Year of Plant Health. Plant health, food production, is starting with healthy seed. Healthy seed is the starting point. And to have the right outcome, to have the right harvest, we need to be able to provide healthy seed. And yes, the seed sector with its breeding programs is engaged since many, many years in this day-to-day -day challenge of farmers against pests and diseases. And we are continuing to deliver on this. And therefore today we think the topic is also important because seed applied technologies is an additional tool to help us to provide farmers with solutions on the ground in their fight against pests and diseases. And the point is, we need to do it together. And what your call of today is extremely important. And I see also this summer webinar today as a further step in exchanging ideas. And it's not always easy. We know it. You named the topics we have to discuss also. That's about seed systems. It's about policies. It's about regulations. But if we are unable to have this open dialogue, I think we cannot progress together. And therefore, we see it from our side very positively to have this debate today on seed applied technologies, which we see as an essential tool to protect seed for the farmers with regard to pests and diseases. And we see it also somehow as a starting point to further address these kind of challenges together. Because what we are looking for is to give the full potential of genetics to the farmers. And seed applied technology is a tool to help us to provide this full potential. And with this, 
I'm very happy again. And thanks again to FAO. Thanks again, Director Chia, for the opportunity to have this webinar today. Um, I'm very happy to give back to Chike. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Shia and, uh, and Michael, uh, for providing this uh, extremely insightful um, uh, perspectives, uh, which uh, situate uh, the work, uh, I mean, the event of today within the wider context of uh, the imperative of uh, addressing uh, food security and malnutrition. And um, well, thank you, especially Shia, for uh, announcing uh, the forthcoming uh, conference. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let us then switch gears. Uh, the first uh, uh, segment for today uh, will address seed treatments and their wide range of uses. Uh, a global perspective. And uh, for this, uh, we will have uh, uh, two um, uh, eminent professionals uh, lead uh, the, um, uh, the presentations. And th uh, these are um, Mrs. Klaus Schlunder. Uh, he is the head of sea treatment uh, regulatory and associations of the KWS uh, group. Uh, he will be presenting with uh, Mr. Rob Pronk, uh, who is the Global Marketing Manager for Incotech. Uh, gentlemen, the, the floor is yours. You are muted, uh, Klaus. Now yes. you should hear me. Thank you very much, Chike. And yes. it's a pleasure to present these uh, topics to you today. So seed applied technologies um, and their wide range of views. Um, what is the global perspective? And we have... Uh, sorry. We have split it in um, uh, two different uh, parts. The one is uh, to explain why we are doing uh, seed applied technologies and we are fighting with these technologies against pests and diseases. And it is seed borne, it is soil borne. And then on the other side, we have the technical uh, side, which is drilling precision, better vigor and micronutrients. And um, if we uh, look into these things, uh, we have to say, what, what can we deliver from, from the seed side, from the breeding side? And uh, we can say plant breeding normally covers resistance to diseases that affect a grown plant and a few of these, these ones that affect the establishment of, of seedlings. And the establishment of seedlings, of course, is the key issue to receive a proper yield. But on the other side, plant breeding cannot cover certain seed-borne fungal attacks and cannot cover certain pests such as cabbage flea beetle in all seed rape or wireworm in maize. Um, maybe these are not crops which are, well, maize certainly, but all seed rape is uh, maybe not a crop where you are handling in certain areas of the world, but uh, for Europe, it's, it's a quite important one. And we, we see clearly that um, to work against insecticides, uh, it, insects is a very important part of the success of a crop. And if we continue, then we, we see certain seed board and, and seed transmitted diseases. I've put a, quite a range of products uh, of uh, species here, but um, the main point, for example, in maize, where I want to concentrate on is delayed and lower germination rate due to fungal diseases, which is loss of plants due to early attack for example, by fusarium species or yield damage and delayed ripening of plants. So uh, we, have, we have a lot of, of points where we see large, large impacts on, on the yield. And if we go to soil borne diseases, then we have delayed and lower germination rate due to fungal attack again in maize, loss of plants due to early damping off like putium, fusarium, dexlaria, and early dieback of plants. So um, 
we have we have points where seed apply technology is very very important especially if we talk about the starting of the products in on the field and uh, if we go for the parameters for yield we have of course as already mentioned by um, um, President Chia and uh, Michael Keller, seed of high quality, high germination, ge good genetic potential, seed zone with optimal density and seed spacing, crop a good crop nutrition we need, acceptable climate conditions, uh, water temperature, precipitation, wind, etc., and plant protective products, inoculants, herbicides, biostimulants, to protect the seed, seedlings are planted against biotech. Um, so uh, against biotic um, stress and abiotic stress like heat and drought or uh, stimulate its development. So all these parts are a um, big part of what we are doing with seed applied technology. And um, the necessary approach for that is that we have to find different solutions to allow the genetics uh, its full potential. Seed applied technologies are one of those solutions being integral part of the production process, protecting plants and plant products again, har against harmful organisms, improving agricultural production. And well, to do uh, so, seed applied technologies are used to achieve healthy and well-established crops. And I would like to hand over now to my colleague Rob Pronk um, to explain more in depth the technology. So Rob, the floor is yours. Thank you, Klaus. So we're talking about seed apply technologies. So what are these? Well, actually simply put, it's the application of ingredients on the outside of the seed. And ingredients can be several full, it can be plant protection products, insecticides, fungicides, it can be biological organisms or stimulants, biostimulants, micronutrients, and all of that together with inert materials like clay, binders, stickers, pigments, etc. And the goal of this is either to protect the seed, seedling or plant, or to stimulate its development or facilitate plantability. Yes. So there are various types of seed treatment. Uh, you can have a basic coat, simply plant protection products or colorants are applied, very small amounts. Then you've got film coats where the product is a bit more uh, complex. Uh, you've got a, a binder, a sticker in a very thin layer. The seed, seed shape still is unchanged. Yeah, it could be completely covered and, and colored. Uh, and then Crossman, that's the next level where an inert product could be applied, which changes the shape of the seed and mostly used to facilitate uh, mechanical planting. And finally, you've got palleting, where you have a complete coverage of the naked seed, making the seed completely invisible, which allows for both for easy mechanical planting, uh, and you have plenty of seed space, which can be applied in different layers, uh, either closer or further away from the seed. Can you go one back, please? Yep, the benefits of seed treatment. Uh, there's, of course, the effective use of ingredients, where you can have a reduction up to 90% uh, of use of PPPs compared to foliar or in furrow uh, application. It's safer for the environment and workers uh, due to dust control, provided of course that uh, the product has been applied uh, properly and safely handled and sewability is improved. The sewing of seed can be done uh, by various ways in modern countries. Uh, equipment that's being used can be huge with 24 up to 48 rows of planting simultaneously, very high tech. Uh, and in developing countries, there are various ways. You see a few pictures uh, 
uh, a person putting uh, rice seed being sown uh, manually by a leaf blower or using a tractor where a couple of lanes are being used. Uh, the seed treatment is being used in various continents, uh, talking about field crops. Uh, maize is being grown in all continents and the vast majority of all maize globally has been treated. Uh, looking at soybean, where in the Americans, a lot of that is being grown and over 50% is treated a bit, depending on the uh, conditions during sowing. Uh, looking at cereals, wheat, sorghum, millet, uh, in many different continents, uh, the majority of that has been treated. Uh, rice, also a very important staple crop. Uh, it's only treated if planted in uh, dry land. Uh, so the majority of rice actually is untreated and very important other crops like potato and cassava are tuber crops, of course, no seed is involved. Uh, and looking at vegetables, uh, onion and tomato are the largest crops and the majority of those also are being film coated and crusted or palleted. And that's the end of my speech. Back to uh, you, Chico. Okay, uh, uh, thank you so very much, uh, Klaus and uh, Rob, for explaining to us uh, what uh, seed treatment is all about, uh, their advantages, and um, you know why we need to um, uh, adopt this practice. Uh, we will now uh, watch um, a, a, a short clip on um, how seed is treated in, in, in fact, in real life. Uh, Manu? Hello, my name is Jeff Daniels. I am an International Seed Federation SATCOM member located in the United States. I represent the American Seed Trade Association as well as my company, which is a major, major provider globally of both seed and seed treatment. This video that you will soon view was extracted from a U.S. Environmental Protection Agency seed treatment virtual training workshop that was conducted a couple of years ago, a session that was viewed to be of great value. The equipment and process that you will see represent commercial treating, not only in the U.S., but in many regions of the world. We're going to, we're on the treater floor now. So we're on the second floor of our treater tower and we're going to, to uh, quickly walk you through the, the two types of treaters. And, and Jeff and Perry have both mentioned the continuous batch and the continuous flow treaters. And so first we'll focus on the continuous batch treater. And it typically will start at the computer. I think we've seen a video earlier today where the, uh, the uh, applicator was, was uh, sitting at the computer desk. And this is typically where we would start as well. And so we would input a recipe uh, into the system. And uh, from that point then, uh, once the recipe is loaded, we start the actual treatment process. And so at DISC, we have uh, 12 day tanks, and this is where the different uh, seed applied technologies or products would be introduced into the system, uh, day tanks. And so there's an individual tank for each, uh, each one of the crop protectant products. And that from here, uh, these are pumped over to load cells. And so based on the recipe that was loaded into the system, each one of the, the, the products is uh, pumped over to the load cell. And then based in lost and weight, and on the recipe, it's then pumped over to a treatment manifold at the top here. And it's at this point that the static mixer at the top where the hoses come together, uh, that the ingredients are mixed very well. And then we have the, the black and uh, yellow uh, valves. These will open and close because the different crop protection chemistries, as Jeff alluded to, can be added at slightly different times depending on the recipe or the need. Uh, so that we have a very, very high level of control. And so from the white hopper up above, seed is passed down, it's weighed, it's introduced into the uh, batch treater bowl, and then from the static mixer, the, uh, the mixed ingredients are then added 
uh, into the spinning disc or the atomizer, very close to what you've seen with Wade, um, with the Hege. The difference here is this is an entirely closed system, um, and we're not touching the products, or the applicator is not touching the products or the seed. Um, depending on the recipe and how the, the program has been set, uh, the, the seed and the products will be treated over a period of 30 to 60 seconds, and then they're discharged. While that's happening, the next batch of seeds has been weighed. Again, from the, 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 the day tanks pumped over to the ground scales, the materials are, are passed back through the static mixer and down, and the process repeats until all of the seed has been treated. So again, just to emphasize, there's 12, we have 12 day tanks here, they're, they're more available. Those feed into a loss and weight system where very exacting uh, amounts of, of the products are then um, pumped over to a static mixer where they're mixed. And then we have a high level of control uh, in, in the bowl treater, continuous batch treater. And again, this is where we want uh, to put a very high level of product on. So very common with corn, uh, canola, and things we're putting a very high volume of treatment on. We need a lot of a high level of, of precision and a high level of uh, uh, the ability to monitor and change things so we can get that high level of product on uh, very effectively and efficiently. To um, seed, seeds such as soybean uh, or wheat, we would go to a continuous flow drum treater. So typically with these, we're putting a lower volume of treatment on and the seeds themselves uh, are, are easier to treat. And so within these, these are similar in, in theory to the, the batch treater, but the seed never stops flowing. And so we'll convey seed over to the top into the hopper above. It will pass through a seed wheel where the, the rate of the, the movement of the seed is constantly monitored. And then it'll pass through uh, an atomizer, like, much similar to the batch treater, where the, uh, the recipe is added. And then move through the drum. <clears throat> and the drum is rotating throughout this. And so the seed is, is approximately 50% treated when it enters uh, into the drum. And then as it rotates, it polishes and, and drops out. It's fully treated by the time that it, it falls below. Again, our continuous flow drum treaters are also a closed system where we have the different uh, ingredients also added in a, in a closed keg system. So for example, here we have 15 gallon drums um, that are attached to pumps. Uh, and then based on the, the uh, recipe, uh, the weights of those, the loss in weight, that material flows through the tubing to a static mixer where the ingredients are mixed and then it flows very quickly uh, towards the seed as it flows through. And again, closed system and the, uh, the applicator is not coming in contact uh, either with the seed uh, or the seed applied technologies. And then as it passes through, it will go through the drum uh, down to our discharge area. Tremendous advancements have been made with the seed treating equipment and the treating process over the last few de decades. Modern day equipment can deliver seed treatments with a high degree of accuracy and efficiency. These treaters can minimize or eliminate manual measuring and mixing of products while doing so in a closed system. And possibly most important, greatly minimize exposure to those workers that are part of the treating and packaging process. Thank you for this opportunity to allow us to provide a more in-depth view of the commercial seed treating process. Uh, quite impressive. Uh, so um, we have, as it were, uh, listened uh, to the horses' mouths, the practitioners in the field. They have, uh, you know, described to us uh, seed treatment, and we have also watched uh, seed treatment. Uh, being uh, carried out uh, in, um, an, in an industrial setting. Uh, we will get back to discuss uh, all these in greater detail. Uh, but for now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I crave your indulgence uh, uh, to introduce um, a slight modification uh, to the agenda. Um, we have with us today a farmer 
with pharma uh, because ultimately, you know, the um, we are successful when the products get to the hands of the farmers who can then plant the seeds on their farms. And uh, we, we have a, a farmer who is here with us today. Um, she was going to intervene uh, much later when we would have seen all the science and technology, uh, but unfortunately, uh, she needs uh, to leave uh, uh, shortly. So I, I crave your indulgence uh, for, uh, for us to now uh, uh, grant the stage uh, to Ms. Uh, Ruramiso uh, Mashumba, a, a farmer from uh, Zimbabwe. Ramiso, please. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, so I'll share a bit about myself um, and where I farm. I farm um, in a small town um, called Marundira in Zimbabwe, um, about one hour from the capital city. I am on a commercial farm, a large um, scale farm, about 650 hectares. Um, 300 hectares of it is um, arable and um, the other is for our pastures. Um, on that 300 hectares, we have um, 100 hectares of eucalyptus trees, which we planted in order to address the challenge of deforestation that's happening in our, our area, because most farmers um, grow tobacco crops, which need um, a lot of firewood for curing. Um, We seem to have uh, lost your audio, Ramiso. This commercial maize um, and seed maize. Um, seed maize for maize is the staple crop in Zimbabwe. So we, um, we grow a lot of maize um, to feed our, our nation, as well as, um, our, uh, as for stock feed. I also grow wheat, which is very um, important for, for our, our country again, because we import a lot of wheat um, and then indigenous grains. So on the topic of um, seed, for us as commercial farmers, or for me personally, seed is one of the most important um, pillars of our farming. Um, we put it in um, farming into um, a few brackets. We say um, cultivar or the genetics. The genetics of our, of, of our seed that we plant is very, very important. It, it, um, it either gives us profit or loss. And um, th that's then there's other things that are very important to us, which is the condition of our soils, um, the climate, um, the fertilizers, and also the, the costings of, of our farming. So um, talking on seed, um, in Zimbabwe, um, seed, most farmers, I would say 90% of farmers currently are growing hybrid uh, maize um, seed. Um, we have some communal farmers who grow recycled seed but the challenge with recycled seed again is that the the crop is not able to produce high yields like um like hybrid seeds so farmers are continuously looking for the best seed to give us um to give us high yield for maize the highest yield recorded in our country has been 23 tons a hectare um for my farm i have had 10 10 tons a hectare this is under pivot so under irrigation conditions so we really monitor and we look at the different seed varieties that are producing. And we've noticed that the way seed is bred um, gives you different results. And for us, seed dressing, um, again, is very important. Why it's important is because um, uh, over the years, we've had increase of pests and diseases um, due to many factors. One of them is uh, climate change. So one of the pests that we fight a lot is the four army worm. The four army worm is a total disaster in Zimbabwe. If it is not treated, you can lose 100% yield. 100% yield, imagine. That is everything you have planted. And for us, one hectare of uh, maize costs us $1,000 to, to grow. So um, if you have 100 hectares, there's 100,000. So for us, uh, this is not a negotiation. We really need to make sure that we are working with stakeholders who are looking at um, the science in developing of the seed, the science in developing of the chemicals, and of the seed dressing. Well, before when I started farming, we were only buying our certified seed um, dressed already, but now we're adding extra seed dressing onto the seed um, when we plant. Um, we we because when the seed emerges in the ground, um, before we what the the advantages we found with seed dressing is 
Um, most of the times, if you wait for your to, to then scout your crops and then address the challenge of um, different pests and diseases, sometimes your crop would have already been far gone. Um, so, and then also scouting is difficult, especially when you're on a large scale farm. Um, it takes a long time to, to, to scout. So at least the seed dressing will protect the crop for a, a certain period of time. We still come in um, every two weeks and scout our crop. And then if we see any challenges of any pests and diseases, we are able to address. And there's continuous knowledge out there, which is um, thanks, thankful to science that is actually helping us um, address some of these challenges. Of course, I think there's still room for a lot of research that needs to be done because um, continuously there's new diseases that we need to, to tackle. And um, there's lots of other technologies that we'd want to be able to use as farmers um, in, in, in Zimbabwe, Southern Africa, a lot of Africa, and a lot of people don't have access to seed, which is very, very important. And really, um, I, I would say would is the differentiator between um, live hunger and, um, and being able to, to sustain the, the economy. So it's, it's very important. But um, when I look at also seeds that are available in the market, this year I planted, because I'm also, as you can see in my background, that is um, um, a field that I was baling. I'm also um, improving our pastures at the farm. And I also planted sunflower, but I could not find sunflower seed, certified sunflower seed on the market. I had to buy sunflower seed from the supermarket. And I can tell you that my yield was not as I would have wanted. This is the difference between um, getting good quality seed and not good quality seed is the yield that you realize. There's also other grains that still have not been released on the market that we would want to be able to, um, other seeds that would want to be able to, to plant on our farm as well. So I, I would say again, the success of us farmers to be able to, to grow enough because we are facing so many things like climate change, um, pests and diseases, and these things we do not have control of. But what we do have control of is for us to get the science, um, get the knowledge into the hands of the farmer so that we can grow and we can be able to produce food so that we're able to feed our country, feed our, our, our people and reduce hunger and poverty. And also the economies of scale are important because when we're able to produce um, um, high volumes on a small piece of land, we reduce the amount of land that needs, needs to be cleared. We reduce issues of carbon emissions because we're not clearing continuous lands, not leaving land to go to soil erosion. But we're actually taking care of our soils and again able to produce the belief because of able hope for the future. I thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so, so very much, uh, Ramiso, uh, for these uh, um, uh, uh, brilliant interventions. Um, I'm sure that uh, neither those of us in FAO or ISF uh, uh, could have said it better. Um, I find it interesting that um, you've characterized as uh, quality seeds as uh, the differentiator between uh, poor yields and uh, good yields, which of course translate also to food security and uh, nutrition. And um, you are putting your, your, your mouth basically where your money is because you are a commercial farmer. You want to make a profit. So you want uh, the, the very best. We, we will still get back to these um, salient points that uh, 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 Ramiso has uh, raised, even if uh, uh, she, she, she leaves now. Uh, there are other panelists, I'm sure, who will be able to fill the questions um, as, they, uh, as they arise. Ramiso, we, we thank you uh, so, so very much. Um, we move now to the, to the next segment um, of uh, this webinar. Uh, which uh, uh, will address the regulatory and uh, legislative uh, situation, uh, uh, taking a global look. And for that, we invite uh, Luke uh, Dormoy, uh, the supply chain manager uh, for uh, Lima Grain. Luke, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh the current uh, regulatory and legislative situation for uh, seed applied uh, technology. Um, oops, sorry. 
some words about the context uh, first of the CEDA activity to understand uh, after the, the, the regulatory situation. Um, for, uh, for, seed, um, for seed industry, uh, it's important to underline that we have a lot of uh, movement of seeds uh, in the world for different uh, activities for, from breeding uh, to seed pr to production and, to, and to, to marketing of the seeds and including uh, testing of the, the different uh, varieties at, and seeds in different parts uh, of the world. Um, this means a global movement uh, of seeds in the world. And uh, I just would like to highlight that for, uh, for seed applied technologies, uh, processing facilities are key, as you have seen uh, before, in order to uh, receive the seed from the production location and to, um, uh, to, 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 to do some uh, technical uh, operation in order to prepare and to, 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 to to, to, to move the seeds uh, in, in the world. Uh, this uh, location, uh, are, well, these facilities are located in, in some region in the world uh, due to the fact that uh, they need uh, expert uh, knowledge, specialized equipment and a strong uh, logistic and uh, infra infrastructure um, facilities. Uh, the processing of the seeds uh, need uh, several operations, often uh, cleaning of the seeds, uh, sorting of the seeds, sizing, priming, bagging, conditioning, some operation uh, in order to have a, a good quality at the end, supporting by a strong uh, quality control and analysis for following uh, the process. And when the seed uh, processing is completed, seeds are ready to, to be uh, exported or re-exported in different global market sowing or testing uh, area. Um, regarding the re regulation of seed apply technologies, uh, there are different approaches in the world. And uh, today we have to say that uh, it's uh, globally an unharmonized uh, approach and, and, and uh, definition in the world. Uh, I will detail or come back after. And uh, we are facing some confusions uh, regarding the different step uh, during the life of the seed applied technologies and their, uh, the interaction with seeds. And uh, when we have to face to, to unharmonized uh, approach or regulatory approach in the world uh, with a confusion of the steps. This uh, leads to, uh, to limit the access of this uh, technology to farmers with an impact on the movement of seeds for supplying the different uh, market or testing area. Um, an harmonized approach and definition, uh, what does it mean? In fact, there are several uh, um, uh, regulatory approaches in the world. Some of them are based on, on function. Uh, this means, uh, as presented before, the function of the product uh, uh, applied on seeds, either pesticides, stimulants, or fertilizer. Some other regulations are based on the product nature uh, of the product applied on seeds, uh, either, for instance, biological, chemical, or natural extract. And some regulations are based on the mix of, of both. Uh, other point taking into account uh, in the regulatory from framework, we have to face to, to, to some quality standards uh, which are not uh, harmonized at global level regarding mainly the condition of use of, uh, of a product, for instance, uh, um, the, the, the quantity of, of uh, product to be applied on the seeds or by species. Uh, so the scope of, uh, of, of the use is different, uh, or could be different uh, between countries. And uh, sometimes we have to face to technical requirements. Uh, we are different uh, according to countries and which in fact uh, limit uh, the use and, and the movement, the use of the seed applied technologies and the movement of the seeds uh, treated by this technologies. Other uh, limiting factors or uh, unharmonized approach in regulatory uh, point of view, this is the labeling uh, uh, approach of the treated seeds. Um, uh, mainly two points uh, on the labeling, the safety uh, labeling 
uh, which could uh, be uh, applied on, 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 on the treated seeds and the condition of use of the treated seeds. Um, ISF has developed uh, a position paper uh, for, for supporting a standard, a standardized uh, approach of the labeling uh, because it's a key point uh, too. And uh, with this uh, global environment, uh, unharmonized uh, global environment, we have to say that uh, there's multi con multiple conditions of the same seed apply technologies in different countries are often a barrier to treated seed movement uh, across uh, international borders. Um, the complexity of the regulation uh, dealing with seed treatment product is often linked with the confusion of uh, four main steps when we are talking about uh, seed treatment uh, product or, or seed, uh, seed applied uh, technologies. The first point and the first step is indeed the, the movement of the seed treatment product um, itself to, to feed uh, uh, the, 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 the facilities for application. But the first step, this is the movement of the, of the seed treatment product. The second step is uh, the application of, uh, of this product on the seeds in seed processing facilities that you have seen uh, before. But uh, it's uh, the second step and it's different that the movement of the treated seed after, this is the third step. And, um, and the last step is indeed the release of the NSTP in the environment by sowing treated seed. And in fact, often we are facing a, a complexity of the regulation because uh, these four steps are not well uh, addressed and uh, there are confusion between the four, these uh, four steps. Look, can you go to uh, the um, proper show mode because the letters are too small. Ah, okay, okay, sorry. Thank you, Klaus. Is it better like this? Not yet. It has to switch. Now it's better. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, so some ways of improvement uh, here are more uh, question than answer, but it's uh, to, 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 to share with you and to highlight some, some points that uh, uh, how to reach uh, international uh, guidelines or based on framework, addressing uh, definition, addressing uh, these different steps of use and life cycles of, uh, of seed applied uh, technologies. Um, for making the distinction between the control application of, of uh, seed treatment product uh, to, to seed in processing facilities and the release of the seed treatment product in the environment uh, during the sowing of treated seeds. Uh, question for, for accessing uh, seed treatment product in seed processing facilities. Um, as uh, processing facilities are not uh, are located in a limited number of countries in the world, the question is how to feed uh, this, um, uh, this facilities with a, with a product. Can we imagine or uh, promote something like a mutual recognition system for supporting uh, the use and the movement uh, of um, of seed applied uh, technologies and uh, to, to go to move for a standard labeling requirement for treated seed, which uh, would help uh, the movement and uh, the access to these uh, technologies. So for my side, it's okay. Thank you all. Okay, uh, uh, thank you so, so very much, uh, Luke, uh, for this, um um, insightful uh, observations and, and comments. Uh, and um, I, I find it instructive that you ended with uh, a set of questions, uh, which I think uh, provide a very rich uh, substrate for our subsequent uh, uh, conversation. But I think it also sets the stage uh, for the next uh, uh, speaker um who will uh, talk to us about uh, upcoming innovations what can we expect to see next and for that i invite mr pale pedersen uh, who is the global head seed care product management of syngenta pale please thank you so much and uh, 
Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope you can all hear me well. Um, yes, we do. It, it's my pleasure to talk to you about uh, innovation and what you can expect uh, from, uh, from the industry in the future. So I'm presenting this, of course, I work for Syngenta, but I'm presenting this on, in general from the industry, what's happening to get you an idea about where we are and where we're gonna go. So first of all, we have talked a lot about this already um, over, over the last uh, hour or so, that the benefits of seed treatments, that are many of them, and, and, and still there are a lot of people that don't understand the value of the seed treatment. When the seed treatment first came into the market back in, in I was saying commercial industrial agriculture, many of them looked at them as an insurance. Um, it was to be sure that you protected your stand, but not everybody looked into, it would be a technology that will give you an additional yield and protect that genetic yield potential. And that have changed. So the economic benefits that have been many studies have been done by universities uh, throughout the world that have shown that the benefit of protecting uh, the seed, but also be able to do the, the optimum economic practices to maximize that genetic yield potential you have. So that have been really uh, research and, 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 and it's been understood much better over the past 25 to 30 years. On top of that, the target protection. So we apply uh, chemicals on the seed and only in a small amount, only for where it is really needed. So when you're looking about, uh, for example, integrated pest management, um, you are, you're not targeting beneficial insects that are in the field because with an over top spray, uh, a lot of times you may not have the, the luxury to use a selective uh, a crop protection product. So in this case, you, know, you, may, you may harm some beneficials, uh, but using seed treatments, you're only putting this, uh, the treatment exactly on the seed where it is. On top of that, of course, it's cost effective because you're using much less uh, product versus um, if, you, if you treated the whole acreage or if you use what we call an infra application. The environmental impact because you're using smaller quantities, of course, is not, uh, is not um, something we should, we should forget. And then last, of course, it's user friendly. So uh, it's uh, safe to handle for the farmers. Um, it's um, for the people that are treating we saw the nice video that uh, Jeff Daniels was uh, talking about, where in closed system and closed treaters, um, it's very easy to control this today with modern technology and really can minimize the exposure and the impact uh, on the farmers. The problem we have is on, 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 on all these technologies, what do we really need? So many studies have been done and I will use soybean and corn and maybe we should talk about corn uh, since we just heard about it from the farmer uh, um, previously. But we know that to maximize genetic yield potential and maximize yield, you have to plant early. So when you're planting early, a lot of times you don't know what you're going to deal with out there. Um, it can be cool and wet condition. It can be hot and dry. It can be hot and wet. It can be, um, it can, it can be so many different parameters that will impact. And on top of that, you have four different, we will call classes of, of pests that you're dealing with. So first you have the climate changes, the soil conditions, and then you have nematodes, uh, which could be endoparasitic or ectoparasitic. Endoparasitic, the living in the soils uh, uh, only, or ectoparasitic that move in and out of the root system. You got the insects, you can have sucking insects, which most of the time are above ground like aphids. You can have soil pests that could be like wire worm and grubs. And then you can have chewing pests, which could be like fall army worm or lepidopteras that are chewing above ground. Seedling diseases, you can have pethium, phytophthora, rhizoctonia, fusarium. They're all different pathogens that are all belonging to different families and they all require different conditions. Some of them will kill the plant and the seedling. Some of them will just be nipplers and, and feed on the roots. Um, so those are the different ones. And then on top of that, we got what we call seed bond diseases. So if we're not using certified seed, but we're using some of our own seed, or maybe the quality of the certified seed may not be where it should be, you can bring diseases into the field as well. And that can cause some, some challenges as well. So, so these all these categories are causing this to be very complex. So seed treatment is not just about one active ingredient. Based on this, I think you can understand that this is very complex, 
And a lot of time, that's why we're creating solutions for you that you can be able to, to, to maximize that. But we also have what we call biological. So we, we saw previously about the diseases, insects and, and, and nematodes. So of course we're using nematicides, insecticides and fungicides, but we also have something we call biologicals. And biologicals we wanna put into really three categories. We have the biocontrol, which is products where they have a biological origin that where you can claim on the label, it has activity on a specific um, pathogen or insects or disease. You got the biostimulant that they help the plants to get out of the ground very quickly and uniformly. And then we have what we call biofertilizer or inoculants that are used uh, within our legumes for nitrogen fixation. The reality is today that as you can see below, um, biologicals are quite commonly used, but in approximately 40 to 60% of the cases, you know, they are used in combination with chemicals. So we don't have any what we call biologicals today that can replace chemicals at the level where we are. And we don't see it gonna come in the short term future. So because of that, a lot of people are talking about we need to use more biological organism in our field. We agree on it, but it will not be able to, to replace what we're currently using today. So, so this is the key thing that, 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 that these biologicals, uh, they are complementary to what we're doing now but we are not in a situation where we, we feel that they can replace and give them, um, give them this scenario. And the example is here in this diagram where you can see it. Um, and, and if you see at the, uh, the red line here that is going from the bottom left to the top right, this is the incidence of, for example, diseases and insects. And you can see your X axis, this is the growing days. So over time, up to 30 days. And then on the Y axis, you have what we call uh, efficacy or um, you know, stability within the, the product. So over time, your insects and your diseases will build up in the field. I think that's natural. Your chemical seed treatment, so what we're using today is, what, is the big blue line that's going from the top left corner and, and, and declining a little bit. So yes, it is declining over time. We apply very little to the seed and it will break down naturally by uh, either UV radiations or by moisture or uh, oxygen CO2, it will break down the compound over time. And at a point you will lose efficacy and benefits effect. And because of that, you often hear that seed treatments are what we call early season uh, protection products. So they will give you a chance to get the crops established, but it's not like it will give you completely control throughout the growing season. So many products today will give you up to four weeks, which is very common. And then at the bottom left corner, you can see there's two different lines. And this is just to give an example that the biologicals we see in the market today or the biologicals that potentially will come in the future, they will have activity, but we don't see they will have the same level of activity of the ones we see uh, from the chemistry today. So where you maybe will get 90 or 95% efficacy on a chemical today, you may only get 40 to 50% and then the declining much faster over time because you're bringing in a natural organism into the field, which will be impacted, its performance will be impacted on the environment condition or temperatures or even soil types and organic matter. So, so the reality is they bring activities, but it's not to the same level as, as where the chemical are today. All of us in the industry are working on this to try and figure out how can we make them more efficacious and, and make them more efficient uh, but as, as, as I say, in the short term, we are not there. Uh, and, th and this is just the way it is. So to finalize this and, and, and just to wrap this up, so the expectations, um, biological markets will continue to grow. We see a lot of uh, activities in the field. All the big international agriculture crop protection companies are working in this area, uh, try to understand how we can utilize our knowledge on fermentation and manufacturing of, of uh, natural organism and bring that in into agriculture. So it will continue to grow, but we don't see it's gonna replace chemistries. The reason for that is what I mentioned before, efficacy, stability and duration. So it doesn't last as long because it's impacted by the environmental condition. Many of these products also, if they are biocontrolled product, they only work on one organism so if you can remember, I talked about seedling diseases, insects, nematodes, and seedborne diseases. Um, you will have to use a lot different kind of biological organism to be able to get that complete com protection. 
so also what we know is that we have not recognized how to get them systemic to be able to take them up by the plan. So anything above ground, so above ground insects coming in early after establishment or what we call seed borne diseases where it is inside the endosperm, we have not seen any biologicals that, that will work on that. So these are some areas that we still need to use chemicals for. Um, fermentation process, that each fermentation process depends on each organism. So manufacturing and supply chain is gonna be very, very difficult. And then of course, there's the regulatory challenge. The good biocontrol products, a lot of them also have what we call um, metabolites. So they need to be registered as well and need to go through what we call a traditional regulatory process. And then the final thing, there are countries that don't allow uh, natural organism to be shipped into the countries. So moving of biological organism from one country to another country is not as chemical as, as register a chemistry and move that throughout the world. On the chemistry side, where are we going in the future? I think the chemistries that will be used for seed treatment will be a much more narrow spectrum than what we see today. Uh, and a lot of that is simply related to uh, the regulatory um, uh, challenges and, and, and demands. So um, because of that, when they're narrow spectrum, that means we need to put more active ingredients on the seed to get the same complete control as we have today. And because of that, it will require much more complex application and support from, from the chemistry companies to, to support the farmers. So by that, I will, I will thank you all for listening to this and I look forward for the Q&A uh, discussion later. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Pale. Uh, I, I, I really like uh, how you have uh, conceptualized this, that uh, going into the future, we'll, be, uh, we'll have to be you know, trying to uh, get the balancing act between the biologicals and the, and the chemistries and trying to uh, find some level of harmonization uh, regarding the policies uh, um, uh, across uh, countries. And I think that also segues neatly into the next intervention. So we have heard about the big science, we have heard about what we, uh, what will be happening uh, in the future. But uh, going forward, you know, um, what can we expect in practical terms based on uh, what are happening in the field uh, by the farmers and also um, how is the capacity being strengthened in order to adopt these uh, technologies and in that regard we'll listen to Raf, Mr. Raf uh, Glaubis uh, who is head of global asset management at uh, Seed Growth. Uh, Raf please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chike. I hope you can hear me well and can see my, my screen. Excellent. Yes, yes. So, uh, so I, I, what I would like to give, and I would try to be brief to allow some time for discussion as well. Um, I would like to- That would be appreciated. <laughs> I would like to give you a brief overview of uh, what we mean with, uh, with stewardship as a seed, seed treatment companies. And then I would like to also give you some specific examples of training initiatives or technology developments, which are uh, developed by specific country, companies, but of course they are representative, I would say, for all or nearly all players uh, and providers of seed treatment technologies. So just as an, as an opening. So stewardship, um, fundamentally we look at, uh, this is important to avoid negative impact on fundamentally two sides, on the, on the human health, as well as on the environment. So we need to just differentiate and distinguish between the, the human health effect, which can be one on the operator side. So the ones who are handling and doing the physical treatments and, and, the, and the farmers on the other side. And I think we have seen examples uh, in the last 60 minutes already of several of them. And then the second uh, area will be the environment where we also need to um, reduce or avoid negative impacts. For the first one, actually, when we talk about stewardship activities, it's pretty much about dust emission and reducing this. And this can be done by best practice or by technical innovations. I will come to some examples later on. The other one in terms of how can we um, avoid the impact on the human being is just issues on, uh, or can only be done via information trainings 
and that needs to be done repetitive in order to avoid, avoid negative impacts. So uh, what we as, of course, seed treatment product providers, we, we are aware of our responsibility. And as you can see here, we do not stop after selling our products. So we are aware that there is after, there's a life after selling our products, which means on the right-hand side here, the, the stewardship measurements. And uh, actually this is being part, an integral part of our business practice, decision-making uh, as part of our company behaviors. And uh, as I said earlier, minimizing environmental impacts is one of them. And the other one is uh, respective on the, the human being. But uh, I would like to give you now two specific examples um, in, the, in the next two slides. So one is more, you know, we are, we are serving millions of customers with thousands of products, um, big customers, small customers, high tech, low tech, small farms, big farms, they all dealing with similar problems, but the approach needs to be different. I mean, we have seen Rura Miso with some of her examples, how she is dealing on her farm. Uh, but uh, the, on the other hand, we have also customers, you have uh, large scale farms when you think about maybe Europe or, or in the Americas. So all of them needs to be somewhat taken care, taken care of. And uh, the two examples here for professional users, we I would like to differentiate in the upper one is minimizing dust emissions. So this is technologies as a technology which is put on the sower, which helps to avoid or reduce the dust emission of the, of the chemical or biological pro product to evaporate in the air. So you see here, so this is this is somehow in field uh, stewardship, you could you could say. And this is somewhat the deflector technology. And only with, uh, or with this technology, with, or let's say with basic tech, uh, deflector technology, you can already reduce 90, 90% of dust emission, which, is, uh, which is, a, is a great, great advancement of this technology. The, the lower example, finding, it's called finding the exact C treatment endpoint. That's done uh, in order to help uh, with the appropriate recipe, so the combination of technologies, inert solvents, in order to identify the uh, via technology, via digital technology, to identi identify the right amount when the, um, the, the treatment on the seed is done or is finished or is the best one. The best one uh, in two sides in order to allow the best efficacy of the seed we, I think we have heard this multiple times. It starts with seed and high quality seed in terms of efficacy, germination, and a couple of other things. And the other one is, of course, stewardship measures so that we have, uh, can avoid uh, the, the right moisture point um, from our seed treatment products on the seed. If it's too wet, it's bad because it's sticky. It does not flow through the soil. If it's too dry, maybe there's too much of the dust to be potentially evaporated in the air. I'd like to continue with the with specific examples for, for smallholders, fall armyworm. I mean, intentionally, you have heard already fall armyworm by uh, Rura Miso earlier that this is a big, big problem on her farm um, in, in Zimbabwe, but this is pretty much a, this is pretty much a topic which is more and more arising over the entire African continent, you could say. So what we see here is, I don't wanna go through all the individual steps, but this is season long or year long support and training measures for our farmers as well as operators, which start prior to the season with somehow off season advanced training sessions. Here, this is a three day example, but again, there are similar examples from other companies as well. And it continues over the entire season and helps them uh, from, from applying the product uh, in season application assistance. There are label stickers with uh, PPE, so personal protected um, uh, equipment, and, uh, and all, also later on in order to how can they um, dispose the, way, uh, the, the respective waste uh, management programs for the PPE or all the other technologies. So, um, I would like to, as I said, I would like to be brief here in order to allow some time for discussion, but these are just two specific examples. There are, there are way more, and I think the entire industry is aware of their 
responsibility when it comes to stewardship, which is pretty much a training and information of all our customers as well as the respective operators. With that, I would uh, stop here and hand it back to you, Chike. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ralph. Um, um, you've uh, presented uh, a, a very uh, encompassing um, a narrative of, of the subject matter uh, for today. And um, it's been, um, um, it mirrors the excellent presentation that we have also had uh, from other colleagues. And participants have also been um, they are quite active uh, with their questions, uh, but I'm mindful that we have just five minutes left. Uh, we will still need to have the closing remarks by uh, the two organizations. But let me just uh, uh, have a run through um, of uh, some of the questions that have come up. Um, Diksha Shema asks um, really about um, um, access to these technologies, especially for third world countries. Um, how can we get these technologies to third world countries? Uh, what steps are being taken? And I, I'll make bold uh, to just answer that the process of getting the technologies to, uh, to, to the third world countries include what we are doing today. We are in the process of um, establishing the evidence um, in order to develop uh, the, the work program, have a robust uh, advocacy, and um, use uh, such uh, examples as uh, 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 Rami So has already given. Uh, FAO um, uh, is moving aggressively, as uh, Director Shah has said, to leverage science and technologies to achieve uh, green production. But uh, one, um, a, a couple of technical questions uh, for which I will ask uh, the, the, uh, the, the panelists to intervene, uh, however briefly. Uh, one was from uh, Dr. Rame uh, Gauda, uh, who asked, can we apply seed treatment chemicals or micronutrients in nano form if so, what are the biosafety issues? Um, and then um, uh, that, that, this question aligns with that of uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Walsh, who asks what aspects of seed treatment procedures, practices can be managed at the farm level. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, Klaus and Rob, I don't know whether you can just provide a sentence each or two to address uh, these uh, technical uh, uh, aspects of the question. Klaus first. Well, thank you, um, Chike. Um, moving sea treatment on the, on the sea, on the farm itself, is always a, a very difficult situation because uh, in the end we don't know the equipment which is available there. Um, we have uh, still um, um, possibilities um, which are um, rather difficult um, using a concrete mixer or something like that and apply the, the product without proper uh, application rate which is always either a, a, a too low or too high C treatment, which is affecting either efficacy of, of the chemistry you're applying or you're risking to spoil the seed themselves by too high toxicity of, of the seed itself. So on-farm C treatment is a very tricky thing unless the farm itself has a proper seed treating equipment which is necessary to really apply it in the, in the proper sense and in a safe way for the applicant as well as for environment. Well, thank, thank you very much. Rob, do you have a, a, a sentence to add to that? Uh, well, if, if I'm uh, fortunate enough to answer the, the, the nano question, uh, be, uh, I can assume, that I can understand why Lee, why Klaus left that to me because it's a difficult question. I'm not even sure what it means. Uh, maybe uh, people think that it's very small equipment that can be used. Uh, 
that's not what it is. Of course, uh, nanomaterials are a specific technology where, where chemicals are being put in a very specific mode. And there are different uh, products on the market, but I wouldn't go as far as to, to make any specific recommendation uh, about that. Uh, I see, Luke, you raised your hand. Are yes, you uh, able to help me here? Yes, sure. Uh, it's important to underline that uh, when we are applying something on the seeds, it's important to, to, to assess the impact that this uh, product, whatever the product could have on the seeds and on the quality of the seeds. Uh, therefore, uh, there are always assessments um, for assessing the relation between the product of the, uh, on the seed and the seed itself and the quality of the seeds to, to be sure that we are maintaining a, a, a high level of the quality at the end. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mo uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, I will crave your indulgence. Uh, we will need to, uh, uh, to close uh, in the next five minutes uh, thereabout. But um, uh, Luke, I was just uh, wondering if you could, um, in the same breath, responds to a question by S.T. Puri Utami, who asks, if we added micro microbes into the seed, will there be the blooming of microbes in the soil? For example, if we use the trichoderma or the microbes in seed uh, coating. I can try to address that uh, okay. if you want me to. Okay, by all means, me yeah. yes. So a lot of time, these biologicals, they need, um, many of them, you know, they, they need a, a food source to reproduce on. So it's, 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 it's they don't stick to, to organic matter and, and deal with rainfall over time. So if you use it, you need to come back and use it the next year. So it's not like you can just apply it once and then it will build up naturally in the soils and you're going to have a solution for the rest of your time. That's not the case. And you use trichoderma. Trichoderma is very, we have known about this for probably 100 years that it has an activity, but um, it doesn't build up in the soil because of that. So it has also natural enemies they're dealing with out there. So, so no, the answer is no, you will still need to do a yearly uh, protection when you're treating your, your seed and when you're planting your seed, that it, 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 um, it's not something one time application, and then you've got, you got a solution for the rest of your career. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Pale uh, and Raf. Um, there is a question here um, that uh, relates to kind of what happens on the ground. Uh, Patricia Gran asks, um, uh, seed priming is known to improve germination speed and uniformity, uh, mostly results in higher yield. I'm wondering how much of an effort companies put into improving seed priming methods based on your experience is this something you're driving i think uh, I, I think every company has uh, research activities towards that area but i just want to mention again you know um, the interaction between the seed the soil and the plant is very very difficult from a scientific perspective to grasp let me take it like this so that makes it also very difficult to find proper solutions who can uh, address this. I see Pale nodding, you know, that that is clearly something uh, which is, um, we would love, we would love to find solutions that can we, that we can uh, offer, let's say like this. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Raf. And then uh, uh, friends, colleagues, the other questions, we'll probably address them. Uh, we have the email of every participant. Um, you'll be receiving the links. Um, you know, the link to the YouTube video of this event. Um, we will also try to get the participants to address uh, some of the other nitty gritty uh, questions. One that I take full responsibility for is the criticism um, about the lack of uh, gender, uh, gender diversity in the panel. Um, I take responsibility for this. Uh, I don't know that it helps, but we tried as much as we can to achieve as much um, 
a parity as we could. This is the best that we could do. It's not an excuse. It's not a justification, uh, just uh, stating it the way uh, that it is. And uh, having said that, I apologize again for having uh, for, for the overrun. And uh, I invite uh, the deputy director of the Plant Production and Protection Division here at FAO, uh, Remy uh, Nono Womdin, uh, to provide some closing remarks. Thank you, Chike. Uh, Mr. President of the International Seed Federation, Donald Hoss, uh, Director Xia, uh, Mr. Secretary General of uh, ISF, uh, Mr. Michael Keller, a distinguished panelist, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, thank you very much for contributing so comprehensively to this webinar. Very inspiring to connect with you all. As highlighted by previous speakers, seed is a basic and vital input for sustained growth in agricultural productivity and production. Optimizing agricultural production begins with selecting the best genetics and protected seeds and seedlings from pests and diseases. This requires precision in the seed treatment process and attention to the safety of operators and farmers. That's why the safety and regulatory aspects are so important for a professional high precision treatment system as we have seen in today's presentations. Governments, the seed industry and chemical companies have worked together to regulate the formulation of commercial products for seed treatment, reducing the volatility, increasing the adherence to seed and applying colors to the formulation. Extensive work has been done in some countries to specify and standardize the safety requirements of seed treatment plants, as well as the information provided on the label or back. Seed treatments applies crop protection products exactly where they are needed, at the contact point between seed and soil, avoiding the spread of chemicals in the whole field. This allows a much lower rate of chemical use per hectare and optimize efficiencies of chemicals inputs. This is of vital importance for our ongoing quest to feed a growing population while minimizing damage to the environment. It was a great pleasure to listen to today's presentations about the latest developments in seed industry. Thank you very much for your attention. And, and thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so, so very much, uh, uh, Remy. Um, uh, I will, let's pass the mic now to uh, Mr. Donald Coles, uh, the president of the International Seed Federation, uh, for his closing remarks. Donald. Please. Thank you. The Honorable Dr. Zia, Honorable uh, Remy Namawambin, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Almost all life on earth relies on seed for survival. And as what we've heard tonight is in the face of climate change, the status quo is simply not enough. And we've heard tonight also that there are four ways to support, support sustainable food production. The first of course is good agronomic practices. The second is a safe application of crop protection products. And the third, as you've heard in great detail tonight, is seed applied technologies. But I want to also draw your attention to the fourth, which has also been mentioned in part, and that is quality seed and plant breeding. Of course, quality seed means sustainable seed that is of sufficient quality to not carry diseases. And the plant breeding effort we call um, our, our um, plant breeding innovation. All these elements I call food protection practices. It is essential that we work together to support the continued sustainable food production by using 
all of these protection, food protection practices. It is my great honour to lead the International Seed Federation and our 7,500 uh, 7, odd seed organisations around the world and over 65 direct country members. It is an even greater pleasure to work with the FAO and the various UN agencies to further the vital global effort to improve sustainable food supplies. The entire seed industry sector is committed to safe, scientific and evidence-based product, products and practices in line with FAO principles as espoused. I wish you all a safe and sustainable future and thank you so much for attending. Thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Donald. Uh, uh, on my part, if I could uh, summarize today's events in one word, it would be inspiring. So this has been an inspiring engagement. Uh, we feel uh, encouraged and emboldened to do even more along these lines. And uh, the only other thing that is left for me to do is uh, to thank you all, uh, wonderful panelists, uh, to thank uh, uh, our uh, participants who have uh, uh, been actively engaged and also to thank those who work behind the scenes uh, to make this possible. Uh, Francine from the International Seed Federation and from our end here at FAO, uh, Manur and, uh, and Marisol, uh, we thank you all so very much. And um, I wish you all um, um, a very uh, enjoyable rest of the day and ask that you remain tuned because we will be uh, revisiting this subject matter uh, going forward. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye.